In this section, we're going to continue looking at integration techniques. Specifically, we're going to focus in section 7.2 on methods for integrating um, products of powers of various trig functions. So before we get into um, the specific techniques for handling those different types of integrals, we first need to review um, a little bit about trig um, antiderivative rules as well as some key trig identities that we'll be using. So let's start with the trig antiderivative rules and remind ourselves about the ones that we know so far and then we're going to learn two additional rules so um, we'll end up with antiderivative rules for all six of our trig functions. So remember we know what the antiderivatives of sine and cosine are. So we know that the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. We can always check our antiderivative rules by taking the derivative. We know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'd have negative negative sine, which would give me back sine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, since the derivative of sine is cosine. Okay. So we've known those two rules for a little while, um, but we're also familiar with the rules for the integrals of tangent and cotangent. So let's just remind ourselves what those rules are. So integral of tangent and also the integral of cotangent. Now in case you've forgotten each of these rules, we can derive what those antiderivative rules are using u substitution. So notice that the integral of tangent can be written as the integral of sine whoops, over cosine. And if we use u substitution here, we could let u be equal to cosine x so that du would be negative sine x dx. Okay, so we could rewrite this as negative du over u and see that that would be negative the absolute value, negative log um, of the absolute value of u plus c or negative log of the absolute value of cosine x plus c. Okay, notice that um, using my log rule, so if I wrote this as log cosine x to the negative one power, remember with log rules if I have a um, log x, oops, that can be written, let's see, let me write it as a log b. This can be written as log of b to the a power. So if we take that negative one and raise cosine x to the negative one, that's the reciprocal of cosine. So we could also write this as log of the absolute value of secant plus c. Okay, so now we have this rule, or reminding ourselves of that rule. You can either remember it as negative log the absolute value of cosine or log the absolute value of secant. Okay, so if you weren't as familiar with that rule, now you have a way to help you remember what that rule is. For cotangent, we could go through a similar procedure to uh, rederive the rule, but the integral of cotangent will be log of the absolute value of sine x plus c. Okay, whoops. So we have those rules. So that's four of our six different trig functions. So what are the other trig functions that we need rules for? Well, we need rules for the integral of secant and the integral of cosecant. Okay, so let's look at how we can figure out the rule for first the integral of secant. So there's a little um, algebraic trick to derive the rule. You won't have to remember this trick. I'm just going to show you um, where the rule comes from and then you can memorize the rule. So the trick here is to take our secant x and multiply by secant x plus tan x over secant x plus tan x. We're trying to introduce some other um, pieces into this integral so that we can make use of u substitution to help us solve the integral. And this is a common technique in math to multiply by something that's essentially one, but add some extra pieces that you need to help you solve the problem. So I'm multiplying by the secant x plus tan x over itself, and then we're going to let u be equal to secant x plus tan x. So we can find what du is. So remember that the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x, and the derivative of tan x is secant squared x. 
we get all that dx. Now notice I could pull secant x out of this, so I'd have secant x times tan x plus secant x, okay, which is exactly what we're seeing in our integral here. So this numerator of secant x times secant x plus tan x dx is going to become du, and then that denominator here of secant x plus tan x becomes u. So we see we get log of the absolute value of u, or log of secant x plus tan x plus c. Okay, so now you can see where that rule comes from for the integral of secant x. So we've got the integral of secant x dx is log secant x plus tan x plus c. Okay, and with a similar kind of trick, we can find that the integral of cosecant x is log cosecant x minus cotangent x plus c. Um, you may also see the rule for the integral of cosecant x written as negative log of cosecant x um, plus cotangent x plus c. So you can remember either one of those um, different forms. To show that these two are equal um, requires a bit of algebra and things. It's not just as simple as the negative sign on the outside becoming the negative sign on the inside. There's several steps there. Um, but both of those would be uh, equal to each other and would be the antiderivative for cosecant x. Okay, so now that we have these two additional rules, um, you're expected to know all of the rules, including this rules 9 and 10 here, um, on this basic integrals handout. So I encourage you to make flashcards um, to help you make sure that you, you know those rules really well so you can use them when they come up in our different integral problems. So the one other thing that we want to review before we get into looking at examples of um, integrating these different products of powers of trig functions, I've got a summary here of some key trig identities. There's lots and lots of trig identities out there. This is highlighting the ones that we're going to be using the most. So you can just kind of focus your attention on remembering these few identities. So the Pythagorean identities we're going to see used in a lot of the trig integral problems. You're probably most familiar with the one that's cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. It's always good to minimize your amount of memorizing. If you know this first rule, you can derive these other two identities by just um, initially here dividing each term by cosine squared. So if I divide each term in cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 by cosine squared, I would get 1 plus sine squared over cosine squared would be my tangent squared, and then 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. Okay, so I think it helps if you um, you know, just remember this first one and then know you can derive these other two by either dividing each term by cosine squared or dividing each term by um, sine squared. Thing to remember with the, these other variations of the identity is that it's not secant squared plus tan squared equals 1. It actually becomes 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. Okay, and then we have cotangent squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. The ones that we'll see the most are going to be the identity with cosine squared and sine squared, and the identity with tan squared and secant squared. Okay. Sometimes we're also going to be seeing these half angle identities, identities for um, sine squared and cosine squared. So this is another um, type of identity that we're going to need. We'll sometimes call these the power reducing identities. And they'll be useful for when we want to integrate um, even powers of sines and cosines. So notice that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2, and cosine squared is equal to 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So notice, again, we try to minimize our amount of memorization. These two are really similar. Only difference here is that I've got a minus in the identity for sine squared and a plus in the identity for cosine squared. Silly way to remember that. If you think sine, sin, negative, Maybe that'll help you remember that you've got the negative sign there between, or the minus sign between 1 and cosine 2x, and then cosine just has the positive 1. Okay. Um, double I angle identities come up sometimes. Notice that you don't really have to remember this first one for cosine 2x, because you could just solve 
the cosine squared identity here for cosine 2x or the sine squared identity for cosine 2x and that would give you some of these other um, variations of the, um, the identity for cosine 2x. So the only thing that's really different with the double angle identities is this um, sine 2x identity that comes up now and then. Okay. So continue in the video lectures to see some examples of doing some integrals of these products of trig functions.